Good morning. I'd like to call this meeting to order and uh, ask the clerk to call the roll, please. Lori? Or Rosa? Supervisor Zaragoza? Here. Supervisor Long? Here. Supervisor Huber? Here. Supervisor Parks? Here. Supervisor Bennett? Here. The first public speaker is Patricia Lacey. Good morning, you're ready? Good morning, yes sir, I am. Board of Supervisors, good morning again. I'm here today pleading with you to save my father's life from the Ventura County Public Guardian. My name is Patricia Lacey. I am the daughter of Stanley Zirka, who is now 102 years old. My father has lived with me since, nine, since 2016. I'm a registered nurse and I provide round-the-clock care for my father at no cost. My father repeatedly states he wants to live with me it's a privilege to have my father in my home. We both treasure our time together. My father is remarkably active at 102. He golfs, attends church, attends his Knights of Columbus meetings, and grows tomatoes in the garden. We traveled to Washington, D.C. last year with Honor Flight, a wonderful organization who honors veterans. Sadly, my father suffers ongoing abuse by the public guardian. After more than a year withholding my father's funds, the public guardian finally dispersed some funds that were owed much too late to be able to make up for the financial loss. But along with those funds came retaliation by, de by Deputy Public Guardian Lorraine Bocanegra, who obviously was reprimanded for causing financial harm to Mr. Zirko and me. On three occasions since your last meeting on September 17 that we spoke, Ms. Bocanegra and six other county employees arrived at our home unannounced. The purported reason for the intrusion was a wellness check to monitor my father's blood pressure and heart rate. Perhaps Ms. Bocanegra professes greater medical exp expertise than my father's cardiologist and his primary medical doctor, who both examined my father in the last few weeks. We believe Ms. Bocanegra intends to remove my father from our home. We believe she intends to place my father in a facility where he would not receive the specialized round-the-clock care he receives, which is in my care, in my care plan for him, and filed with the court. The court believes that such a move would endanger my father's life. If Ms. Bocanegra wished to act on my father's best interest, she would engage in-home supportive services, which is IHSS. My father would welcome caregivers. I would welcome an occasional respite. We contacted CalFresh, IHSS, and Medi-Cal, but we are denied because Ms. Bocanegra refuses to return their calls to obtain information as she controls my father's Social Security and is paying attorney's fees with money he needs for his expenses. If the public guardian's office wished to act in my father's best interest, they could assign a competent deputy who is not biased against my father and me. We have asked all supervisors for assistance and have been ignored. I ask the Board of Supervisors to protect my father from further retaliation by Ms. Bocanegra. I truly believe my father's life depends on your protection. Thank you for letting me speak. Thank you for your testimony. Our next speaker is Stanley Zirko. <clears throat> My name is Stanley Zirko, and I am 100, 102 years old. Why is the public guardian attacking me and my daughter? I am scared of Lorraine Conegra and her supervisor. She has done nothing for me and withheld my money and refused my <laughs> communication. She forced me to get out of my own bed, and I got hurt, and she denied my medications. I want to live with my daughter. I feel protected with her, but with Lorraine, she makes me anxious, and I'm so fearful of her. Why is she so hateful, and why isn't her supervisors reporting her to the committee crimes? My daughter endures, ensures my reason for living, giving me a wholesome, helpful outlook on life. Lorraine is harmful, mean with a bad attitude there is no purpose no purpose i i hand wrote a letter to everyone who has done bad things for me and my daughter which was sent to you and the purpose is to put them to on notice and how fearful they are they need to be replaced with professionals no communication no money no medical insurance no medication, stripped of my civil rights. 
I feel secure knowing that my daughter will take care of me, even though the public guardian and attorney lie to the court and misturn facts, holding back vital information and commit perjury. My daughter has a warm heart and the public guardian has a heart of stone. So does anyone who does not do anything about the disgraced public guardian. One day, one, one day, Board of Supervisors, you will be by the, by the hands of the public guardian. Your work today on recruiting this broken system will ensure you and will uh, have your life placed in danger like mine. My daughter takes care of me and love me and I want her to stay with her. That is my right. Just because the public guardian and country council makes my, my lies and judges believe in it does not make it right. That I cannot live where I want to. I want to stay living in my daughter's, daughter's home under her care. Anybody have a problem with this? Putting me in the hands of Lorraine Bocagna her supervisor or county council is a death sentence. Thank you for your testimony, Mr. Zirko. Our next speaker is Julia Inglis. I think the two of them have summed it up pretty well. One week ago, we were here today pertaining to the desires of Mr. Zirko and pertaining to the county guardianship. He was also here in front of you at 102 Cognitive not isolated and of his own volition. I'm here today to speak on what I've witnessed beginning a few hours after we were here on 917. Mr. Zirko thankfully had a doctor's appointment. The cameras at the residence showed two sheriff, two county workers, and five others. Ms. Bocanegra indicated she would be back that afternoon and did not show. On the 20th of Friday at 9.30, we were out to breakfast and they showed up at the residence. And when I returned first, I saw one sheriff still at the entrance. I requested that he contact the other car so we could resolve this. He turned his vehicle and left. That same afternoon, the same number of sheriff's county employees showed up for a quote unquote wellness check. I did state to a colleague that this was slight overkill. Read the number of people knowing at the adverse reaction to his person and the cost to the county. Mr. Zirko agreed to allow a few necessary people in at the same time to be compliant. We were present as well as the sheriff. Christy Green, senior deputy, came in to have a discussion. Ms. Bocanegra refused to come into the house. It is possible for one person to take care of another 24-7. Yes, is it difficult, but it is possible. I have done this in taking care of not only five of my family members, but 10 other people that have asked for my assistance. Ms. Green has requested records that are difficult to obtain in the time frame she has given Ms. Lacey. And she has stated that on Wednesday, if Ms. Lacey does not have these records, that Mr. Zoko will probably be removed from his home in spite of his wishes and desire. His daughter has already stated she's an RM, but what I'd like to definitely say, the court documentation stating if Mr. Zirko is removed from his home, it would likely result in the decline of his health. I'm here against my own doctor's advice as I'm having heart surgery in two days with a 30% chance of positive thank outcome. Thank you. Thank you very much for your is, testimony. In my experience, ma'am, thank you very much for your testimony. Chances. Thank you. Your, your time, your time is up. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Um, before we go on to our next speaker, uh, I want to uh, make a couple of comments. This is the second. Uh, to me? No. Uh, you, okay. You're, we're done. Thank you. 
this is this is the second week um, that we've had uh, uh, Ms. Lacey and and uh, Mr. Zirko and uh, Ms. Inglis here, um, and to make sure people in the audience, uh, people watching. Uh, we have a child protective service system here, and we have an adult protective service division that operates un under a human resource uh, agency. I spend uh, considerable time paying attention to the child protective service side, so I just want to use them as an example. Um, we in the county have one responsibility, and that is to take care of the most vulnerable people in Ventura County. And I've seen over and over again with child protective services where the adults involved many times vehemently disagree with the decision of the Child Protective Services, with the courts as they try to decide uh, what is in the best interest of a vulnerable child. Same thing happens at the adult level. Um, it doesn't usually happen in here in the boardroom, but this case of Mr. Zirko was under the jurisdiction of the probate court it is the probate court that has been making these decisions, uh, and the probate court has made these decisions and directed um, the Human Services Agency to take certain actions. Um, the probate court is the appropriate place for all of these controversial and complicated issues uh, to be decided. Uh, the Board of Supervisors hearing room um, is an appropriate place for anybody to raise any issue, and we never uh, uh, discourage that. But uh, for a complicated issue like this, if you could imagine trying to hear a Child Protective Service case here, a um, number of people speaking. So um, there are many people involved in this, and so I want to read this uh, statement. Mrs. Zirko's case is under the supervision of probate court. Any concerns regarding the public guardian's office should go through the probate court. Mr. Zirko is being represented by the public defender's office. So besides the guardian's office, there's a public defender representing Mr. Zirko. And he has an appointed guardian ad litem. Both are in favor and support the current court orders, the conservatorship appointment, and removal from Ms. Lacey's home. Any decision to move Mr. Zirko would be done so in his best interest and with extreme care and support to ensure the safety and well-being of Mr. Zirko. At this point in time, if people have other questions, because we've had people ask us questions about this, uh, those inquiries should go uh, through uh, the Human Service Agency Council to the probate court um, if, you, if there are any questions out here. Um, so uh, with that, I thank uh, Ms. Lacey for her interest and concern about her father. Uh, I wish Mr. Zirko well. None of these situations are easy. Uh, if you want a really difficult job in life, become a child protective service worker or an adult protective service worker. Um, they do uh, overall for our county incredibly challenging work day in and day out. Um, and um, I wish everybody well uh, in this, uh, this difficult situation. So good luck to you, Mr. Zirko. I hope you're well.